How's it going, Grey Boys? It is week nine, and for the fourth week in a row, I think, we are playing against a top 15 opponent in the country and in our conference, the Big Ten. In the previous three ranked matchups, we are one and two. We lost the first two, but most recently got a good win. It was against Penn State, although our win did knock them out of uh, being ranked, and they have a losing record now, but 38 to 10. And boy, was it a comfortable victory. Uh, the other two are current number three, Michigan, and current number 15, Nebraska. So Ohio State looks to be the last difficult team. Two and four, Indiana. Two and four, Michigan State. And one and six, Maryland are what remains. But uh, I mean, compared to the beginning of the schedule, that is so nice. And the beginning of the schedule helps us look really good. Uh, a win over a current number 19, Minnesota, on the road where we blew them out. A win over a top 10 army where we won in overtime, but a loss against a now number 20 Florida. They've lost two pretty recently. They're certainly a good team, but you know, you lose a couple of games, you slip down the rankings. So this is going to be interesting. We are at home against Ohio State, which is nice. And I think we're favored to win this one. They are a B overall, which is, uh, I don't know how I feel about it. I think it's something that we should be able to beat. Statistically, they don't look, well, actually they look pretty dang good statistically and they are undefeated. So the Buckeyes could be bringing quite a bit uh, down on us. We have a corner recruit visiting right now. Hopefully that goes well for him, but uh, we're just going to have to see which Eastern Michigan team shows up. As far as conference races go so far, we are three and two in the Big Ten East. A win here over Ohio State would be, I mean, crucial, almost necessary if we want to have a shot to make it to the conference championship. And on the other side, it's Purdue at three and one leading the way there again. Number 10, Wisconsin is uh, there two and one. And uh, I mean, pretty much everybody but Illinois still has a chance to win the Big Ten West. Around the country, Notre Dame and Syracuse are the top dogs in the ACC. In the American, it's between USF and UCF, although both teams only have five games played and only one game in conference. So really, you could say that it's between Navy and Tulane. Our Big 12 has TCU, 7-0, number 5 in the country, 5-0 in conference. But Texas and Kansas have not lost in conference either. CUSA has Old Dominion on top with the Hilltoppers trying to chase them down. Our two independents are doing okay. Army, top 10, 5-1, and, and BYU is 3-4. In our old conference, the MAC, it's Kent State uh, all the way at the top there, 4-0 with Northern Illinois at 4-1. The Mountain West is between Boise State, Colorado State, and potentially UNLV. The Pac-12 has three one-loss teams at the top, USC, Cal, and Oregon State. The SEC is Auburn, LSU, and Georgia all undefeated and undefeated in conference, all in the top four. Uh, so there's going to be some chaos happening there. Coastal down at sixth in the SEC, number 12 in the nation at three and two in conference. And man, the SEC is, yeah, well, it's dominating right now. And our final conference is the Sun Belt, uh, our original conference in this long dynasty where we started with Coastal. Uh, it's Louisiana Monroe atop with uh, Louisiana Lafayette and Troy all undefeated in conference. So a lot of interesting looks there. Uh, how about recruiting wise? I know there's at least one thing that I have to change. Uh, some of the players that we added last week, some of the low lot guys, we just aren't going to have a chance to pick up. And it's kind of similar here. Brandon White, we had just added last week, but it seems that that spurred Ohio State into action because all of a sudden they have offered him a scholarship and they're giving him points. So we will take the 300 away from him and remove him as a prospect. And now we're at such an interesting spot with our recruiting this season. Our biggest deficit is Greg Franklin, the tight end. Uh, we're 2,200 points behind and he's 62 overall. So we don't really care too much about him. But then you go down and well, we can scout, I guess, Brian Dockery. I didn't realize that it was just two guys that we had to scout. <laughs> with these guys, we just added the board. They're low lock guys. Not great. So they're not going to get points. And we'll just kind of go down and find uh, JT Brewster. How, yeah, 86 man coverage will give him 700. And we're just kind of going to do that. I think right now, uh, my priority is getting those deficits down. And then with those big deficits, now we can go down to guys that we 
almost have the lead with. We want to try to get to that point where we can get some low lock cheese. So Kenneth McCauley will get uh, 200 points and then we'll offer a scholarship with the remaining points. So here, RJ Rivera. He's an athlete, number four athlete in the country, five star. We have the lead with him, but we've not offered him a scholarship. 79 overall, 90 throw power, 78 throw accuracy. He's got good juke move. He's really quick, great man coverage. Uh, I mean, RJ could potentially do it all. We thought Maurice State was the quarterback of the future. Maybe he takes his place. We don't get the ends to commit, but now we've offered him a scholarship finally, so we can stop uh, jerking him around and see if he wants to come play for us. All right, with all the chores out of the way, we got some football to play, and this is just not going to be easy. We're fighting to keep our ranking. We just got it back, and this is doable. Ohio State in 84 overall with an 81 offense and a 90 defense. Very similar, I feel like, to Penn State's rankings, just slightly worse. So I'm feeling relatively confident. Jersey-wise, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like we've kind of just worn everything so we're gonna go with some sort of alternate yeah let's go with the home alternate the silver helmet last week it was green green gray this week it's gray green green uh in ohio state i know they have a couple of interesting options they've got the white wolf it doesn't look right to me um they have the white out which i do kind of like and yeah we're gonna go with that i always like to try and get all the alternates in place so that i can help show off the work that the revamp team has done so uh, sometimes it ends up with us doing something wonky to uh, schools that typically are wearing traditional uniforms. So coming into this one again, offensively, these guys look almost unstoppable. They're running the ball incredibly well. They're scoring a ton of points. They're picking up a ton of yards and their defense is shutting teams down. So statistically, they have us beaten and battered and bruised, but we're going to try and hold on. We still have Zach Holden coming to visit. I don't think we're too worried about that. I mean, we can't force swatted passes or interceptions, so not on our radar. Uh, our two top players who are like actual kind of skill positions are on hot streaks, which is good. Durmfinch had an incredible game last week. We'll see if he can repeat that. And one of their top players is injured. Uh, and the other two guys are linemen. They're 90s overall. They definitely have some really good talent, but hopefully it's not all that good. Oh, no. Ohio State's been hit with the injury bug. At least three players out, a wide receiver, a D tackle, and a tight end with the quarterback. Uh, D Sims, he's got a pull hamstring. He is probable. And if he comes in and plays, we might be tackling him down on those legs and seeing if we can knock him out of the game. As always, though, the key to winning this one is just to get Maurice uh, off to a good start. If Maurice can stay healthy and throw a couple of accurate passes, we definitely will have a chance to win this game. So it's another sunny fall day here at Rynearson 2. Very excited to get this one underway. The Buckeyes will go tails because they're smart, but they lose the toss. Uh, we're going to elect to kick this one off. I'm really curious to see how good this Ohio State offense really is. So we'll get our defense out on the field first, and that way we get the ball to start the third quarter when we know, uh, you know, maybe if we need to start a big comeback. Again, no idea really what to expect from this offense other than they're probably going to be pretty good. Stacked up on the line, expecting a run. That's a play action for sure. We can't get to it. Jefferson breaks the tackle. I missed the other tackle with Royal, and Chris Jefferson gets 12 yards on the first play of the game for this offense. I think it's good that we've got four down linemen on the day, but I'm not sure what we can do to stop it. Quarterback steps back to throw over the middle. He was a little bit behind his man, but he was able to hold on to it. It's almost another first down, and that is the slightly injured quarterback, Darren Sims. So we'll have a chance to maybe go through and get some shots on him. Not going to feel too confident. Great blocking from the offensive line there. That's a broken tackle. Ron Johnson trying to run this one down. Oh my gosh, what is that? Convoy still breaking tackles. Chris Jefferson, 49 yards, and it's first and goal just like that. We brought the blitz and everything, but it just did not matter as they were able to kind of beat us on that one. They're going to step back to throw, and that's a huge sack. Sims dropped for a loss of nine. That'll take him outside the 10-yard line on second and goal. It was Dallas Miller coming in and making that one 
off of the edge. That's a huge sack. And on second down, tight end motions to the right. Expecting some passes. It's going to be a play action over the middle. We got to worry about it. Got to get the tackles. We could hold these guys still to a field goal. Just trying not to get burned too badly. Oh, Ohio State shooting themselves in the foot there with a false start. Well, the fact remains that, again, we're still trying not to get Pete too badly. In the cover six, trying to use her Smith, and over the middle it's caught, but he's brought down immediately. So the penalty really hurt him. A four-yard reception, and it's fourth and goal. Field goal team out for Ohio State, so they're going to have to settle for three points on what was a really good drive. It seemed like for quite a while there. Kick is up and good. They will take that 3 nothing lead. Brutus, I don't know. He's acting excited, but he shouldn't be because that should have been a touchdown. The way that they were playing. Defense bent but didn't break, and now a chance for a return. Blair fielding it, getting some decent blocks out towards the corner. Blair continuing to pick up blocks, cuts it back inside, and there's no penalties, so we'll be starting from across midfield. Maurice Tate gets to come out onto the field for the first time. And him and Durham Finch looking to really contribute. We're going to run a read option. Durham keeping it on the first attempt there. That's uh, just back to the line of scrimmage. Got to remember that these guys not only have a good offense, but they have a great defense as well. Expecting some pressure. We're going to just immediately scramble. B is wide open if we can get it there. And that's the problem is that uh, we haven't had a chance to get Maurice into a rhythm. So it's third and 10, and I am going to call an AI play call. We're going with the slip screen, something to give Maurice a chance to complete a pass. He's got some blockers. We're not going to get the first down. I didn't expect to. Ah, I thought we were going to get more than just to the line of scrimmage, but it'll give us a pass completion. And, uh, and typically, I think you'd see me uh, keep this ball and go for it, but here we're going to punt it away. Hopefully, we can cough and corner him. I don't feel confident about this one, though. We need a really good bounce. Or he can just feel that he's going to have a good return. Across the 25. Well, the defense didn't get much of a chance to rest. That's for sure. We're going to bring this pressure again. I'm expecting them to go to Jefferson. Man goes in motion. We're bringing a lot of pressure. Can we get there to stop it? Run up the middle. Tackle them at the line of scrimmage. Even with that uh, gain of nothing, Jefferson is still averaging 20 yards per carry. Oh, that's going to shut him down, though. Back to back at the line of scrimmage. It's third and long. All right. Well, a chance for the three and out. This would be big. Going to be expecting the pass. They will step back. Running back could be open. We got to cover it. I saw it, but I'm on a defensive end. Just couldn't get the pressure. That's brutal. I'm not sure we're going to get a better chance than that. Maybe I should have had Carter just gunning it towards the QB, but I had to try and defend that. This one a run. Stopped again at the line of scrimmage. One thing that is important to note is that coming into this game, we have the nation's leading rush defense, so not giving up a whole lot of yards. This one just going to have to be thrown away. Looked like Sims was about to take a sack. Again, though, this is going to set us up with the third and long. And it's going to be third and very long. The second false start of this quarter against Ohio State. The last time the Buckeyes did this, we were able to make them pay. Can we get this defense off the field is going to be the question. Quarterback, plenty of time, has a man open. Royal, well, he doesn't need to make the tap go on open field because Stephen Moore stepped out of bounds. So that one makes it fourth and 11. Not expecting the fake punt here. Uh, we'll send Blair, or maybe it looks like it could be Ron Johnson back there to return. Kick to the right. Oh, no. Blair can't get it. Dallas Miller picks it up, though, and he's going to continue to break some tackles. Oh, <laughs> I'm not happy with the way that worked, but the end result was uh, honestly not all that bad. So we'll take over just shy of the 35-yard line, trying to run the football. Offense has, what, zero yards? Oh, that's going to increase that by, well, about a million percent. Because now they have 12. I'm very much aware that the math on that was uh, incorrect. <laughs> We're going to go back to the counter, though. Durham Finch gets the block. Shimmy Shake makes a man miss. Cuts it inside. Makes another man miss. And it's 25 yards. Durham Finch in the middle of this season has kind of turned things on. As we are looking 
at a swing screen. I don't know if I can throw this. They are in a little bit of a zone. Wait, wait, wait. Throw it. Fontenot catches it. Can't really make the cut that I wanted, but it's a completion, most importantly. And we were able to get positive yards. Second and six. Not sure that we'll get this playoff. So it looks like it's going to be the end of the first quarter. We're down a field goal. All things considered, not too bad. We are driving on just our second possession. So we'll have a chance to tie it up to, or take the lead. But all things considered, happy with the way this has started. Durham Finch going to take the ball on this handoff. Second and six. The blocking looked great up the middle. And he's able to continue to just find some space. He shoved over a defender there as well in the process of getting eight yards. And this is a play that we've only seen kind of work once, but we're going back to it. The mid-screen to Durham Finch trying to wait. I don't see it. That's a pick. No. Able to use her John Wilson back to it, and we got the completion in three yards. That might have been the most foolish pass attempt I could have made, but somehow I was able to get positive yards out of it, which is big. Durham Finch breaking a tackle in the middle of the screen. Or, I don't know what's going on there. He's laying on top of a guy trying to get up. Four yards, it's third and two. So the question is going to be, what can we make out of this one? We're going read option. I don't feel confident with this, but we're trying it anyways. Maury's taking to keep it. Got to take the contact for the first down, but he doesn't get it. And this is a tough decision, but I think we're going for it. It's one yard. It's a decently big one yard, but nothing over the center makes me feel confident. We're going QB sneak Maurice Tate, and he's got the first down. He's taking a shot, which I'm not happy about, but it is first and goal and a chance to take the lead. I just know how important it can be to score touchdowns in a game like this, so that's what we're looking for. As we will go for the toss play, Durham Finch needs to cut it up north. Oh my gosh, where he can break a tackle. The fact that he got to the line of scrimmage is a miracle in my eyes. It's just so often that toss plays do not work in this game, so I was expecting that to be like a loss of five. Play action, waiting for it. A is wide open. Or we can wait for Jeff Fontenot to drop the ball at the goal line. We had the receiver open, maybe for a touchdown. There's a good throw from Maurice, but it's dropped. And we're going to Wilson on the mid-screen. Yeah, I should never have thrown. What, what am I doing? He was blanketed. They were in man coverage. Gosh. Well, fourth and goal. We're five yards out. If we were a little bit closer, I would go for it. But I've wasted some time. I'm kicking the field goal. I just can't risk it. Five yards a little bit too much. And, well, at least we're tied up. Really, I would say that's almost the last thing that I wanted to have happen on that drive. I mean, I guess... Not scoring at all would be pretty bad, but oh, it's so frustrating that we had the chance to take the lead and just couldn't capitalize on it. So on this first down, I should be expecting a, a run, but I'm kind of thinking pass. And it is going to be a play action. Out routes wide open. And there's a little bit of blocking there as well. So they get 20 yards to Chad Paul. All right. Maybe we could do something about this. Trying to bring pressure. They run it. Ron Johnson has his tackle broken, but at least he slows Jefferson down a little bit. I really tried to sell out there up the middle to just force him to cut it to the side. I'm not sure if it worked. They're going to step back again over the middle, trying to defend it, and then pick in. Pass thrown away. Darren Sims does not like being under pressure. So it is third and four, just short of midfield for the Buckeyes, and I'm bringing it. We're going to see if we can stop this fully expecting the run. It's going to be a slip screen and we get the sack. Darren Sims. Oh, he's got those injured legs and he just got flipped. That was an incredible sack. So good. We're going to watch it twice. Oh, just absolutely sent to the shadow realm on that play. Defense again, able to hold fourth and 14. Forcing Ohio State to punt this one away. It's turning into a defensive struggle. So which team's offense is going to figure it out first is the real question. Blair getting a chance to return this. Trying to cut it back inside. And we get okay field position after the punt. And it's time to bust out our favorite play. It seems like the triple option. What can we do? Maurice. Oh, this could be really big. The late pitch. He's going to take a shot. Durham Finch with the spin move of a lifetime. And he breaks free for 18 yards. So close to picking up uh, the right block to take that one to the house. But we will take that. And on top of it all, Maurice didn't even take a hit. 
So that is great news. Y is wide open. Terrible throw. Oh, you hate to see that one. Fontenot was wide open. Who knows if he would have held on to the ball, but it would have been nice if Maurice could have got it to him. Trying to run it up the middle goes Durham Finch, and he is eating them alive right now. Almost seems like shades of CJ Verdell. <laughs> All right, another first down, another pass attempt, and over the middle. Well, we were going for Fontenot again, and Maurice missed him again. Well, let's see what we can do here. I don't at all like the way that they're lined up for this run. We're going to flip the play. Get away from that pressure. It looks like the linebackers bring in. Hopefully, Jeff Fontenot can set a block for us, or we can just get north. And oh, that was a huge hit. Third and six, not in field goal range. This is four down territory. Question's going to be, what can we make out of this third down play? We're going with the counter. We're going to Durham Finch Jr. The blocking is good. The cut was even better. Well, Durham Finch is absolutely on fire, but everybody else on the offensive side of the ball needs to kind of figure that out as well. We're going to throw to Durham. He's going to hold on to it through the contact. Maurice gets another completion, but Durham is just carrying the team. All right, well, let's go with a play action. They should be expecting Durham Finch to get the ball. How about we just get outside the pocket? A is open, B is open, but so is Maurice Tate, and that's a first and goal. Why risk throwing the ball for 10 yards when we could run for it? Man, on top of it all, we get the ball to start the third quarter, and I had not noticed, but we're inside a minute left. 40 seconds on the clock. Not a whole lot of plays that we could run. Durham Finch takes us down to the goal line. And since we can only run a couple of plays, it's time to let this one burn down. We're going to snap the ball at 15 seconds, and hopefully that leaves us enough time. Fullback dive up the middle into the end zone for Courtney Smith. And there it is, the first team to reach 10 points as it'll be a 10-3 lead at the end of this half. So with this remaining 14 seconds, we hope that they return this, which they should. So that'll burn a few seconds. And then we just, oh no, have to not give up a touchdown. Curtis can't, oh my gosh, that was almost a disaster. I don't know the last time I gave up a touchdown on a uh, kick return was, but we almost saw it right there. They're going to step back to throw on this one over the middle. We'll expect to see a timeout from Ohio State and a Hail Mary here. So again, it'll be the man up three deep, and we will send everybody back on this one. Can't allow them to absolutely decimate us, or we can just get the sack. Sims gets hit for the third time in the game. And as we go into the locker rooms, it's up 10-3. And we get the ball to start the third quarter. The defense has really been on fire. They gave up that huge run early on that first drive from the Buckeyes. But since then, it has been pretty much locked down. And the offense is starting to roll. We are absolutely on fire as a team right now. The past couple of weeks, uh, you know, we struggled. For a, for a couple of games, we lost two in a row, but now it seems like maybe we can't lose. I, I mean, I got a knock on wood because obviously uh, we could still very much lose this game. It's a one score game, but I'm feeling really, really confident. So as we get ready to start this third quarter, I'd like to ask you to hit the like button if you can. Show some love for the channel. Help they get this video seen by more people and Frank Blair just can't quite get to the edge and turn it north well we know this is going to be a long drive 80 yards to find pater as we will step back to throw on the first play of the game or first play of the third quarter and this one okay linebacker read me like a book on that one really really wanted to throw that late slant but just couldn't do it Durham Finch, how about a run from him? He's been so phenomenal. The offensive line has been really good as well. Thought there was a face mask there, but still seven yards. That one actually takes Durham over 100 on the day. And we're going to bring Brian Curtis in as a pitch man on a little triple option here. And, uh-oh. Well, Maurice is keeping it. We'll slide down. That one looked a little bit wonky, but it's enough to move the chains. Yes, the positive with those is they kind of allow Maurice to settle in. 
Just a little bit more. Right bumper could be wide open. B could be wide open. A could be absolutely wide open. Fontano comes down with it inside the 10. That was an incredible throw from Maurice Tate, especially to find him so late. I was a little bit worried the safety would get there in time, but Fontano had just enough space to separate the two of them. And good hands to hold on to that one through the contact. Oh, man. How about that for a play? If that one doesn't help Maurice feel confident with the football, I don't know what will. Iran, Durham's going to break a tackle and finally get stopped for a loss. Defense kind of jawing after that one, thinking that they're doing a good job. I kind of think it might be the opposite. I'm going to try this read option. I don't like it. Uh, let's flip the play here. Can't run into that linebacker. Handing it off to Stan Williamson on his first carry of the game. Oh my gosh, that safety just lost his life and Stan Williams makes it a two touchdown lead for us. How incredible would it be if we could prevent Ohio State from scoring for the rest of this game? Uh, obviously, we don't expect that to happen and man, our special teams has been struggling today, but it would be pretty cool. The defense should be nice and well rested at this point. Couple of guys starting to heat up. That's good news for us as they will run it towards the edge on first down. We're there with Logan. We gave up a few yards, but anything to slow down Chris Jefferson. Jeff Jefferson is good in my books. Somehow just couldn't get that name out of my mouth. Jefferson. Jefferson. There we go. Second and seven. They're going to step back to throw over the middle. Quarterback scrambling. We got to go pop him. Oh, my gosh. Oh, thank goodness we were able to recover. If I gave up a first down there, I would have lost my life. Would have absolutely ceased to exist. Should have been a sack. At least it's third and four. We're bringing pressure. They're one of four on third downs in the game. So that's not great news for them. See what we can do. Getting in there with Royal pressure on the quarterback. Hitting him as he throws. And his receiver can't hold on. So it's going to be another stop for the defense. Life flash before my eyes there. I'm sure the quarterback felt the same way. Another punt. Maybe another chance for a good return. We're waiting for one. We've seen touchdowns somewhat recently off of the special teams. Just uh, one more is all we need. Wiggling my way around. Frank Blair. Good return out near the 50. Just over 100 total yards for Ohio State's offense at this point in the game. That is bad news for the Buckeyes. We're going to go slow on this, trying to wait for a blocking. But oh my gosh, number 51. That was a strong move from him. Not only did he essentially tackle the lineman that was blocking him, but he also got Durham in the process. Now it's uh, well, going to be a tough one to try and pick up. B could be open. G oh, Gentry! The step back cheese, a huge move from the freshman. Jody, 34 yards on what I thought was going to be picked off when I threw the ball. Is there anything more dangerous than Eastern Michigan in the second half so far this season? We'll motion Wilson out just to create a little bit of weird space there. And then Durham Finch can't get the spin move there, but does get back to the line of scrimmage, thankfully. Really been enjoying getting the passes, but on this one, second and ten, we're looking to the air. Somebody's going to be open. Jody Gentry could be the man. This is a tough throw. Gentry into the end zone. Oh, just barely breaks the plane. It's a 21-point game. He deserved that touchdown. I'm glad that we could give it to him. And again, Maurice Tate a little bit wobbly on the throw, but at least it was accurate. Oh, boy. Well, even if we don't prevent Ohio State from scoring, with two minutes left in the third, you got to think things are looking pretty grim for them. Undefeated season on the line for the top 10 team here, and it's not looking good. Rynearson 2 is where good teams come to die, apparently. As long as we can hold on. Quarterback back to pass. He's going to scramble, gets hit, and it's Blair coming up to get the sack. Second and 12. I think that might be the defense's fourth sack of the game. And man, you know, I don't know if it's because this quarterback's injured or what, but he has been really, really quick to scramble when things get rough. And oh, wow, Chris Jefferson, how did he stay on his feet that long? We tipped him off balance about five yards into the run, and he proceeded to pick up another 12. That's pretty brutal. This one, another handoff, but this time stopped in the backfield. 
That was Avery Rawls, our lesser mentioned defensive end getting the stop. This one's going to be a pass for sure. Back off the coverage a little bit. Oh, no, a handoff up the middle. And, well, we just kind of gave that one to him. Charlie Franz, that might be his first carry, but it's good for 13. Buckeyes starting to drive real quickly here, nearing midfield on this one. They should continue to run, but, again, it's a play action. They're going to give it to Jefferson, but I kind of allowed that one. Was playing soft, and we only give up three. Anything that we can do just kind of to mitigate those plays is fine with me. Backup running back is in. Looks to be a run out towards the edge. Graham gets the tackle. Just to gain a one, and it's another third down that they'll have to try to pick up. And the question is, can they get this off before the quarter comes to a close? Third and six at midfield. Stepping back to throw. Out route, overthrown. And as the third quarter comes to a close, it's fourth and six. Darren Sims looking rattled. 24 to three as Buckeyes have not found the end zone all game long. And with just a quarter to play, we don't know if they will at all in this game. Unfortunately, to start this fourth quarter, they're going to go for it. I'm going to use Ricardo, see if we can get pressure on this QB and off. Oh, just wide open on that little out route at the line. That would have been so big if we could have got him off the field. This is a weird spot where, like, I don't want to bring too much pressure, but I don't want to not bring any, you know? I'm not sure how this is going to work. That one wide open over the middle just because we audibled a little bit too late, so Trent Dickens was just wide open. We were able to hit the QB there, but we gave up too much, and they are at or inside the 25 now. Good news is we know they're going to be passing, hitting the quarterback as he's throwing that time. That'll be another incompletion. And unfortunately, I think it's Dallas Miller out with a little injury. He had a, some sort of stinger. This one held on to. That was a weird animation, but Mike Clark is coming up clutch. That'll be a first and goal for the Buckeyes. And there it is, a bruised thigh, low re-injury risk. We got to keep him in the game here, I think. And on first and goal, I probably should expect these guys to throw the football, but I'm bringing the pressure. I'm going to see what we can do to try and stop them. They do hand it off. Gave up a little bit, but it's second and goal. Still a chance to hold. And I got to bring pressure on every single one of these plays. We can't uh, afford to give them time to do anything here. This one's going to be a run out towards the edge. We had the chance to stop it. I shouldn't have said anything about them scoring touchdowns because just like that, they're into the end zone. It's going to be 24 to 10. All right. Well, they're only down 14, but not electing to go for onside kicks. So we will take it out. Frank Blair, kind of a risky decision, but getting some decent blocking. And then even on top of all, just burning the clock a little bit. Speaking of burning the clock, it's exactly that time of the game for us. I don't want them to have the ball at all for the rest of this game. So anything we can do just to run the clock down is good in my books. Unfortunately, uh, we still do have to pick up first downs for that to work. So we'll see what we can do. Run in just a normal option. Oh, no. Don't ask me what just happened there. We got lucky. Well, it's third and a long ways to go. Maurice, who knows what he's going to be able to do. Trying to burn the clock. Waiting, waiting. A is maybe open. Wilson? We couldn't hold on through the contact. That was a pretty solid throw. But it's going to be fourth and 14, unfortunately. That was not a good drive. Hopefully we haven't gone too conservative on the play calling. I'm absolutely going to cheese this one past the return man. No, oh, no, don't catch it again. Well, it bounced off of him. <laughs> we gave him way too good a field position. Oh, am I throwing? When I'm struggling just to even cheese a punt, you know, it's bad news. Ohio State, great field position. They could make this uh, a one-score game real quick. We were there for the user pick, but it was just behind us in a diving catch from Clark. So again, they just continue to move. We got to get this pressure on the QB. Three minutes left on the clock. They'll step back to throw. He's going to scramble. And Rawls will bring him down. Still all of the timeouts for these guys to work with. 
but the clock will get dangerously low pretty quick here, I think. Quarterback scrambling again. Please let me make this tackle. London gets the tackle broken. Can we strip the ball? Well, we were able to, but he went out of bounds first. That's a real shame. Turnover would have been huge. The good news is that I know that this quarterback now is kind of fumble prone. So that's what we're going to be looking for. This one to run up the middle. Nice stop there from Lewis. We are absolutely at the point of the game where if they want to continue just to run the ball, they can go for it. It does not bother me one bit. Stepping back, quarterback all the time in the world, trying to cover over the middle. And that one is a drop pick. Chris Whitaker had the chance maybe to seal the deal, but couldn't come down with it. Man, that was scary. The defense had really good coverage, but just couldn't get the pressure on the QB there. Third and five, Dickens coming in motion. They'll step back, look into pass. And in the corner of the end zone, Whitaker, perfect timing, breaks up the pass, and it's fourth down. Exactly what we want to see. They are one of seven on third downs. However, they are one of one on fourth downs. This one could mean a whole lot. It's a screen over the middle, short of the line to gain. London driving and Mike Clark back. And the junior from Leon Valley, Texas can't get it. So the defense continues to hold. Somehow we only have 257 total yards, but 24 points. That's insane to me. Durham Finch. Even if we just go three and out here, force them to take their timeouts and punt it away. I would say that is not a bad drive. They know that the uh, runs are coming. Can they prevent us from getting a first down? The blocking has been mediocre the past drive and a half. But with the Buckeyes having just one timeout left inside two minutes, I'm feeling a little bit confident. Let's bring Fontenot in motion. Bring his man out of the area. Snap the ball. Get the block and get the first down with Durham Finch. That might be it. Only 12 first downs for each squad. Our first downs, though, maybe a little bit more important. Durham Finch getting another handoff. Another couple of blocks. Oh, and that's a big diving tackle, but 20 more yards for the running back. Man, he has been something else recently hasn't he well we're gonna try a triple option this is only pitch if i feel certain i certainly didn't feel certain there so we'll take the loss you know at the end of the day it is still a number six team uh we still want to do some damage to him so i'm looking to pick up yards put up some numbers question is what can we do oh the blocking surprisingly good on the jet sweep to the tight end zach wilson and with that one we are going to be able to run out the clock, but I'm going to run one more play here. Give it to Durham Finch. Uh, it's just a little bit of a thank you. Give him the chance to pick up some positive yards. And he got three more to add to the totals as the clock comes to an end. I'm seeing some Ohio State players get excited, but for what? You just got blown out as a number six team in the country. So back-to-back -back ranked wins for us coming after back-to-back ranked losses is Jody Dentry getting player of the game uh, you know two catches with a touchdown they were important catches but I don't know Durham Finch did way too much not to be player of the game in my eyes 24 to 10 moves us to five six and three so we're bowl eligible and we knocked off one of our big conference opponents so a chance still maybe to make the big 10 championship game at the end of it, though, a nice, complete game. Offense did well, but the defense did better. And, man, we are a, a force to be reckoned with moving forward. Boy, oh boy, has it been a fun couple of weeks. These past two games, the team really laying it on. We outgained them on the ground. 170 rushing yards against one of the better rush defenses in the nation. We held them to 97. Uh, and most of that honestly came off of one early run. They outpassed us, but it's kind of to be expected these days. What I'm most impressed by is the fact that we didn't have any turnovers. Uh, that's kind of rare. We had chances to pick up our own, but for the most part, we were pretty secure with the football. Again, Jody Gentry is our offensive player of the game. Not to knock him or anything because his two catches were pretty incredible. Uh, but I mean, how can you just see what Durham Finch did and not think that he is the offensive player of the game on defense? It's Frank Blair, a tackle for loss and a sack and just three tackles. 
Again, there's probably a lot of players on the defense that could have deserved that as well, but it was just such a nice all-around effort from the squad that it's just hard to pick one guy. So six and three now as we get our big win. And do we have a bye week coming up? No, we play on the road at Indiana next week, and then we get our bye and again, the final three games of this season, the teams have like a combined record of, I don't know, seven and 15, maybe even worse than that. I'm kind of hoping that uh, after a win like that, maybe we can get a couple of commits. We know that we are a little bit short on that, but anything that we can do kind of to start moving points to other guys would be good. Uh, well, uh, Rondell Owens, the middle linebacker, has gone to Indiana, so we will, I don't know, maybe slap them around a little bit harder if we can. I mean, that's assuming that we're going to win, which is certainly no given. Uh, Zach Holden, the 72 overall corner, has committed. Still in recruiting battles with a lot of really, really good players. But what are we ranked after beating a top 10 team? We jumped up four spots to number 17. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if Ohio State was ranked ahead of us. Right off the bat, we are expected to beat Indiana. We're the higher overall team. I think that's all that we need to say about that one. Let's take a quick look at the top 25 polls. Man, Hoosiers, a uh, little bit, yeah, maybe not good. As far as the rankings, uh, TCU lost. That's their first of the season, as did Ohio State. So five and six lost, both to ranked opponents, though. Anybody else? We had number 10 Purdue losing, which is, I don't know, bad news for the conference. Probably good news for us. Coastal lost their third to Army, and the Black Knights are now number six. So Coastal is losing games, but they're to really good teams. So that's a tough three losses. It's kind of similar to us. Strength of schedule very high, but just unable to get it done all the way. And then UCF and Minnesota also both lost. And that's the reason that we're kind of jumping up a few spots. Cal dropped out of the rankings. And Penn State is receiving votes. We would love to for Penn State to be ranked, especially because we were able to beat them. How's the uh, BCS poll looking? Where are we ranked there? 12th. Okay, well, uh, on this channel, we stand the BCS poll. Hey, if you guys like the BCS polls ranking of us, like the video. <laughs> oh, that is very interesting. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it at that. Again, if you like the BCS's ranking, or if you just enjoyed the, the beatdown that we put on the Buckeyes, please consider hitting the like button. And after you've done that, subscribe if you aren't already. Something like 70% of you that will watch this video aren't subscribed to the channel. So if all of you guys hit that, we could break that 5K mark that we are rapidly approaching. I've really appreciated the support that you guys have shown recently. So thank you for that. Uh, after you've done that, head down to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster, where we've recently started a live stream only glass bones dynasty where injuries are incredibly common. There's also links to my Twitter, our community discord, TikTok, Instagram, uh, and the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Grave Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.